All right, here's a quick video on convolution reverb and how you can use it to make ambient textures like the one you're listening to. So convolution is one of those effects I keep forgetting to look at. And what reminded me recently is that somebody asked if it's possible to do reverse reverb in VCV. And the answer is there isn't a specific module to do that, um, but it's really easy with convolution. So I'm using the VCV convolver here that you get with the pro version. If you don't have pro, there's a free one called Convolzilla, or you could just buy the host effects module and use any free convolution plugin. You can also use that in any other software that supports plugins. So this isn't really specific to VCV, um, but that's just what I like to use. So if you want reverse reverb, I've got um, like a plate impulse response here, which is kind of okay. It's from a, it's a recording from an old Quadroverb 90s reverb, a hardware unit. So it's got that kind of grainy, slightly lo-fi quality. Um, but there's quite a cool feature on the, the VCV Convolver module. If you want to reverse anything, you just right click and then reverse IR, and that'll give you the, the backwards reverb. And it's quite long, so I need to play a few notes before it comes through. So there you go, that's not my favorite effect, to be honest. Uh, it's a bit retro, a bit kind of old school, to be honest. But the beauty of convolution is you don't have to use a proper impulse response. I mean, the idea is that you get a recording of a, an actual acoustic space, and that gives you a more realistic reverb. Um, but the best thing is you can use anything as a, an IR, an impulse response. So I've got a few sounds here that I've got loaded up into some samplers. Um, my favourite, to be honest, was actually when our gutter was broken. And this is just the sound of water pouring out the gutter. And there's some kind of background noise, aircraft noise, the other bits. Uh, I recorded this using some cheap binaural mics, uh, which aren't great quality, but they give you a really wide kind of stereo image. Um, so that's, that's the sound. And if we load this into the convolver, this is what it's going to sound like with the guitar. I found a lot of these don't work that well, guitar, to be honest. I think the reason is the frequency spectrum is kind of too narrow. So I've got another sound here, which is basically, it's actually a filter. It's a Surge XT filter, but it's in comb mode. And if you give it a burst of white noise and turn up the resonance, it makes this kind of ping. And that really picks out the, the high frequency information in the IR. So you can hear that kind of rainy, watery texture coming through. And another thing with this is if you're using a long file, it's going to keep convolving it for the length of that file. So this is about 20 seconds long, um, which means if you play a note, it's going to keep convolving the reverb for about 20 seconds. I've actually faded it out of the sound editor. I think if you have a long constant sound, it kind of builds up too much. So here's an example of something that doesn't work. This is what I found, just trying different sounds. So this is a filter ping I made from a different video. And you can hear straight away there's a lot more bass in that sound. And the problem is it's tuned to the note C. So if I load that up into the convolution, um, you'll see this doesn't really work, to be honest. I mean, it kind of sounds right in some notes. I'm actually in the key of D here, but if I play a C, you'll see what happens. And the kind of the, the, the sound builds up around one specific frequency. You get kind of a feedback, which is a bit unpleasant, to be honest. And it does work slightly better on synth sound. It's a slightly more interesting texture. Um, I've got another one here, which is actually, um, it's a phaser being pinged. 
And that's really kind of atonal, sounds a bit like wind chimes, that kind of thing. Um, but again, because this anything with a kind of a pitch or a fundamental frequency, we find it doesn't work that well. So I'll just show you what this sounds like. So you can hear that coming through in the sound. It's kind of similar to a vocoder in a sense, and it maps the frequency spectrum of one sound onto another. So you can do filter sweeps, you can do rhythmic effects with delays. Um, but I think what I've discovered with this is that the best sounds are kind of noise. So anything with a really wide frequency spectrum. Um, so another one here, I've got some bubble wrap, which again was recorded with the, the binaural mics. Um, so you know what bubble wrap sounds like. I'll just load that up. And then each each time you get the, the kind of the sound of a bubble popping, that'll give you a kind of a delay. Um, so if I just play one note on here, and then the bubble wraps generating those extra notes, it sounds kind of like a, a granular delay. And if I unmute this, I can add some more um, reverb and delay on the sends. So you probably wouldn't use that for a whole piece of music, um, but it's quite good for generating these kind of textures. Um, let's do one more, which is the sound of coins rolling around in a glass. You can hear kind of a, a knocking sound. So let's just load that one up. It doesn't work quite as well, to be honest. Again, it's because there's kind of a specific frequency of the glass, and you need really stuff like noise where you've got full, full spectrum. Um, let's just load this up. I think I edited this one, so I'll go for number two. That just gives you a really interesting kind of texture. This one's a bit quiet for some reason. Give it some gain and a bit more width. But again, that's just a slightly different texture, and that's quite a long recording, so that'll just give you kind of a 20-second blanket of sound, like a wash. If you play too many notes, it starts building up, and that doesn't sound great. So I've just got one more here, which is the sound of a, a kid's game, plastic counters. And again, that doesn't work too well, um, but it does generate kind of interesting texture. So you can hear the character of the, the recording coming through into the reverb. Again, that's just going to carry on for about 17 seconds. And there you go, that's how I like to use convolution reverb. Thanks for watching. Cheers.